Welcome back. Today's topic is logging with TerraTerm Pro. TerraTerm Pro is a terminal emulator. Uh, it's similar to its brethren like uh, Secure CRT and um, Putty. Like Putty and unlike Secure CRT, TerraTerm Pro is free. It's been around for quite a while. I think it came out in like the late 90s. I've been using it for a long, long time. It's the one that I grew up on, so it's the one that I'm most used to. Um, I am making the slow uh, transition to Secure CRT, but like I said, Secure CRT is a paid product, and I have videos for both Secure CRT and Putty to accomplish the same thing, the logging. And when I'm talking about logging here, I'm not talking about syslog logging. I'm talking about moving information from a terminal emulator to a local file, in this case, a text file. So basically, when you need to move large bits of output from a terminal emulator, such as when you're doing a show running configuration, or the classic example is when you're doing a show tech support um, output, something that's going to be way too cumbersome to uh, simply sit there and cut and paste from your terminal emulator to um, Notepad, for instance. In those situations, you're going to want to know how to log the output from the terminal emulator uh, so that you're not <laughs> wasting a bunch of time with this. And we'll see examples of that when we jump on the uh, CLI. So what you're going to need is uh, an installed copy of TerraTerm Pro, which you can download from the URL I have in the slide here. And when I say installed, that's kind of a misnomer because one of the benefits of TerraTerm Pro, which I'm going to just refer to as uh, TerraTerm going forward, is that it, it runs from an EXE. So basically all you have to do is create a shortcut to the EXE and you can launch it. It doesn't actually install. You're not going to get it in your... Um, all programs menu which is actually kind of cool because it it lends itself well to um, being stored on a USB stick or you know on, on a CD that you might have with some some uh, network software that you can take with you in case you ever need it um, and then of course access to a Cisco device in this uh, video we're going to be accessing emulated devices via GNS3 slash Dynamips this is the uh, Aera website I'm assuming error is the way they pronounce it. Uh, TerraTerm Pro used to be um, open source, and it looks like uh, this company bought the rights to that. So just to show you that, you know, to download it, you will have to provide your name and your email. I've downloaded this I don't know how many times, dozens at least, if not more, and uh, I've never been spammed by these guys. So you can just deselect the notify me bit and you know, you're good to go from there. Really quickly, this is a network topology, if you want to call it that, that we'll be using for this example. The only reason I have two routers is because we're going to uh, telnet from R1 to R2 rather than just going through the console. Not really important for this lesson, but I just wanted to show you if you're using um, Dynamips with TerraTerm Pro, that in order to get into the virtualized routers, you want to um, telnet to the one dot. 127.0.0.1 and then change your TCP port. Normally this is going to be 23 for um, Telnet and just change it to whatever port you have set up on uh, Dynamips. Eh, see? Easy cheesy. Alright, so we're on the router and the first thing we're going to do I'll show you a couple commands here. Do a show run. It's a show running configuration basically. And you hit enter and it builds a configuration that displays it for you and down at the bottom you're going to see this more um, the more means you know that it's giving you this amount of output and if you want to see more you have to tell it what to do if you hit enter you'll get single lines of code I'm sorry of configuration if you hit the spacebar you'll get a, a full page and you, you have to hit the spacebar a couple times just to get through the uh, entire running configuration now if you don't want to have to hit the spacebar what you can do, I'll show terminal. What I'm looking for specifically here is the length. And this defines how much output you're going to see on your screen. So by default, you're going to see 24 lines of output. And uh, if you want to change that, it, this is how you would do it. You do it with the terminal length command. And you can see you can set that from uh, 0 to 512 uh, lines of output. Let's make it 16 just for shits and giggles here. What I want to show you is that when you do the show terminal, 
you can see now right here that we set this to 16 lines. And the nice thing about this is this is just for your session. So if you set this to, you know, terminal link 16 lines and then you log out, the next time you log in or another person logs in, it's going to go back to the default of 24. Um, this is nice for, you know, getting all your information on there, whatever your personal preferences are. But what I really wanted to show you was that that option there. <laughs> what I really wanted to do was do the terminal link. I'm going to just go ahead and use shortcuts or uh, not use the full word for this. Basically, what I want to do is this This is the bit that's important, this um, zero for no pausing. Like, well, what's no pausing? What this does is this gets rid of the more statement. So if we set this for zero, and this is what I always do before I uh, have large amounts of output, like a show run or show tech. Though I think show tech does this for you automatically now, but anywho. So now if we do show terminal, you can see, actually what's, you kind of see it in action a little bit there. The uh, length is zero. And notice that we didn't get stopped for this command output, you know, normally it's too big to set on there for 24 lines. You you need to hit more or whatever, hit the space bar to get it all on there. This will make a whole lot more sense if I just do a damn show running configuration and show you. So remember last time we had a show run and then every time I had a page of, uh, of output, we had to uh, hit the space bar or the uh, enter key to get more output. But here, once we've set the terminal length to zero, once we hit enter, it thinks about it, it spits out the whole thing. So, and it's fast. It's nice. You don't have to hit that space bar. So you can certainly use this and just then scroll back up, find where it started from, the information that you want. If you wanted to save out your uh, running configuration, just copy all that and then paste it into a text document. Well, where this gets to be a pain in the ass is that um, when you're using show technical support, And what this command is used for is this gives you know, in-depth diagnostics and information on your uh, device. You're going to use this quite often when you're opening a case with Cisco, when you're opening a TAC case. They're almost always going to ask for this. And they can dump it into a parser to find information to help them troubleshoot what's going wrong with your device. And the thing with tech, show tech support, which I'll refer to as show tech from now on, because that's basically all I type when I put it in there is that it spits out a lot of information. Now we're running just a, a virtualized 3640 with a, a bare minimum configuration. I think I only have uh, Ethernet interfaces on here. So look at this just on this real basic um, device. So yeah, did you catch all that as it scrolled by? So this is a case where even in this situation, and especially when you get on to, you know, bigger platforms like 6500s or uh, 7200 routers or even you know, the 2800s there's you know depending on how much stuff you have in there configuration wise and hardware wise this can get really really big you know if you want to scroll back up and just copy all this you can try that but you can see I didn't get all that command it's, there's a ton of stuff there I missed a good good chunk of it and you could set your buffers so that you you know have more buffers so that you can scroll back further but I'm, I'm telling you that even if you set your buffers to their max, now well, I guess I don't know that for a fact, it's going to be a pain in the ass and there's an easier way to do that. And that is actually what this video is about.